This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. It's no secret that automakers are pretty much fully invested in their electric vehicle lineups. And part of that is because gas prices have never been higher. Here in Canada, it's over $2 per liter for regular fuel, at least in Quebec. But also a lot of jurisdictions like Canada are saying that after a certain date, you can't sell internal combustion engines anymore. So automakers really have no choice but to come up with some sort of EV alternative. This, my friends, is a 2022 BMW i4 M50 xDrive. This is the top-end i4 available here in Canada. Now, why is this an interesting car? Because as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty much one of the best electric vehicles that I've driven, especially when it comes to the luxury segment, because it looks exactly like a 4 Series. Okay, there are a few things that make this different. For example, the huge kidney grills up front, most of it is just plastic housing. They're not really functional. Also, around the BMW badges, both on the front, back, and wheels, has a blue circle around it, much like we saw on the i8 and i3 that we've driven previously. But aside from that, this car looks almost identical to a regular 4 Series, or at least what a 4 Series Grand Coupe of this generation would look like if they were available yet, which is one of the reasons why I like it. Yeah, there are a lot of people out there who do like the really futuristic, funky, crazy designs when it comes to electric vehicles, and that is fine, but I think for a lot of consumers, the majority of buyers, they're not quite there yet. They want something that still feels like a car, still looks like a car but just doesn't have any internal combustion parts on it which this vehicle doesn't this is why i'm pretty excited to be driving it now our top end and performance version here comes with two motors so it does have x drive motor in the front and the back produces a total of 536 horsepower 586 pound feet of torque very good numbers out of this type of vehicle in fact, if you put it into the sport boost mode, BMW says that this will do 0 to 100 kilometers in 3.9 seconds, which is on par with the M3 competition. This thing is really fast. Now it uses an 81.5 kilowatt hour battery. It is net, so that means the battery is a little bit bigger than that, but that's essentially what's usable. And it's good for 400 kilometers with this all wheel drive model. If you were to go with the E-Drive 40, which is the rear wheel drive only version, you get about 482 kilometers of range out of it. And again, that will depend on how your driving is. For me, keeping it in sport boost all the time and being on the highway for the most part, I am seeing that 400 number, but you can certainly get that number higher if you're driving in town and maybe in eco pro mode not ripping it everywhere. Now, when it comes to charging this vehicle, I use my EV Duty Smart Home Charger, and it'll charge up to 9.6 kilowatts when it's plugged in, so it'll get charged up you know, in about the same amount of time any other electric vehicle would. I had this at 80% yesterday. It took about two hours to get it to 100. So you're looking at, you know, about an evening to get it fully charged. Now, if you were to buy the BMW Wallbox, which is their own electric charger, you will get 11 kilowatts to get it charged up. So it will be a little bit quicker. If you decide that BMW is the future of electrics for you and you want to buy their own system, that'll help when it comes to charging this. And then BMW says if you were to use a DC fast charging system, a level three charger, it can go up to almost 210 kilowatts is what the car was saying. On paper, it says 205. Unfortunately, here in Quebec, we don't have anything that, that is that close, at least not where I am. I do have a 100 kilowatt charger here. I did try that out and it was very quick. I was able to get about 30% battery in 16 minutes. They say if you are on a 205 kilowatt charge, you can go from 10 to 80% battery in 31 minutes. So if you are going long distance, with this you're in an area that has a good electric vehicle infrastructure you shouldn't have any issues charging it up now why is this car interesting aside from the fact that it is an electric vehicle fully electric bmw says that this is really their first fully electric vehicle that is focused squarely on the driving dynamics unlike the i3 which was like a little bubble and the i8 which was technically a plug-in hybrid so it's not really an electric vehicle the i4 is designed to be what a bmw should be drive like a sports car and it does. Part of that is because it has a rear air suspension. And our M50 model comes with the adaptive M suspension. That's one of the things that I noted when I first got in the car and been driving around with this for a few days now, is if I wasn't aware that this was an electric vehicle, I would think that it is essentially a BMW M car. It drives exactly the way that I would expect a vehicle at this price point from BMW to drive. And the fact that it costs very little to do it is even better because electricity costs a whole lot less than premium fuel does right now. So it makes me smile both on the inside and in the wallet. Now ours is finished here in Portimao blue metallic paint. We have the black Vernasca leather inside with the 
blue contrast stitching, which I think is a nice accent to the blue trim that comes with the electric vehicles from BMW. And we also have the carbon fiber interior trim. The inside is quite interesting. Again, it is very similar to any current BMW on the market, which is again, one of the reasons why I like it. It feels familiar, but we are getting the first BMW curved display on here with a 12.3 inch gauge cluster for the driver, and then a 14.9 inch infotainment system running BMW's latest iDrive 8. So you're getting the most up-to-date technology on this and it works out very well. And if we think back to the E65 7 series, when the iDrive system was first introduced, it was pretty terrible. But now, eight generations later, it is one of the best infotainment systems on the market. So things have changed quite a bit. So we really should pay tribute to the E65 and thanking it for starting off the iDrive life for us. Having something that works so well today because we had to suffer in order for it to be good. But I do want to take this car on the road because me standing in front of it, it's just not as exciting. I want to show you why the i4 M50 is such an exciting car, why I like it, and everything else you need to know if you're in the market for buying an $87,000 BMW that doesn't run on gas. Now I know what you guys really want. You want to see the performance on the BMW i4 M50, and we will get to it. But this is an electric car, so first we should talk about our energy economy. We completed our test loop in this vehicle. We had the HVAC setting set to 21 degrees Celsius, and it was about 16 degrees Celsius outside when we were driving. We completed our test loop in 19.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which overall is pretty decent. I believe the Mustang Mach-E that we did completed our test loop in 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, and then all the other stuff we've done recently was really in the middle of winter. So something like the Volkswagen ID4, it was like 26 kilowatt hours, right? But that's because it was cold out, so we needed to run the heat and everything all the time. But one major problem with driving this car is trying to keep it in eco pro mode because I've had it in sport boost the entire time. And when it's in this mode, it activates the iconic sounds which are created by the legendary Hans Zimmer. So you've got some very interesting sounds when you're driving along with the vehicle, some propulsion sounds. I think it's pretty cool. You put it into eco pro mode, more or less goes away. But that's the one thing about this. You do feel a difference when you're driving in the eco mode versus sport mode. It, it is significant. <laughs> It was one of the things I complained about when we drove the Mustang Mach-E, when you put it into the unbridled mode, it didn't really feel a whole lot different. Yeah, you know, you put your foot down and it'll go, but it wasn't a dramatic change. And that's what you get with the BMW i4, specifically with the M50, because you are getting a dramatic difference between the two modes. And I'm telling you, I mean, this thing really does feel like I'm driving a regular BMW M440i Grand Coupe. I mean, almost M3, M4 level here. The performance is there. I don't have a track to test how the handling would be, but I assume it would be pretty darn close considering we've got a lot of what makes at least an M performance car so fun to drive. But the idea of this is you can have a lot of fun and nobody's gonna know you're doing it. It's one of the nice things about this because it is electric, doesn't make any exterior noise. Nobody's gonna know if we do a big rip here unless they see us. So let's try it out from a dig zero to a hundred. Oh my God, that's quick. Hundred. Oh man. Wow, you just saw the instant torque there. 586 pound-feet of it smashing me into the back of the seat. It's pretty nuts. Now, <laughs> we'll do some more testing, but even if you're already going quick, oh my God, and you floor it. I mean, that power is just there instantly. I haven't dri driven that with any other electric car so far. This has the most power out of any of them that I've done, and that includes things like the regular Tesla Model 3 that we did, or the Mustang Mach-E. Now, some vehicles like the Mach-E GT are starting to get up there. Some of the crazy Teslas with the Plaid versions can get extremely quick, but still, I think 3.9 seconds, zero to 100 is plenty fast. <laughs> You know, you're not gonna be doing that every day because the battery will drain out quite a bit. And as I mentioned, you know, you can get about 400 kilometers of full electric range with this. I haven't seen that in the last day or so because I've been keeping it in Sport Plus mode. So the car is using up more energy than it should, which means I'm getting worse range. So depends on how you wanna drive the car. I think if you're going with the M50, you want either all wheel drive or you do want the performance. So you're gonna be spending a little bit more energy than you would normally. And 
that's fine because again at least electricity costs less here than it does for gas so i'm much happier ripping it around in this and spending a couple bucks to charge it up than i would if this was an m4 and i'm spending a couple hundred dollars to fill it up I'll take it from another dig here again. I can even put it in the auto hold mode. So maybe that will make it, you know, obviously you're not gonna have a traditional launch control because you don't need to rev the motor up, you just go. So the brake hold is on, I'm just gonna mash it. I'm gonna put my head back just to, to be safe. Oh man, that's so fast. 100, <laughs> that's really, really quick. I mean, you do not need a vehicle to be that quick. But I think the fun part is it's so fast and essentially silent. You'll hear the tires, that's really it. You'll hear the wind rushing past, but you're not gonna hear it coming down the street because it is an electric vehicle. So this has been a lot of fun just ripping it around. I do like that. And it's strange because it's really the first BMW I've driven without flappy paddles. One of the first performance models, especially without flappy paddles. And there isn't, you know, obviously it's an electric car. There's only one speed, but you can put it into brake mode by pushing over the transmission lever, which I do like. That's something that we do talk about on a lot of these vehicles is one thing I really do like about this i4 is it does tick off a lot of the boxes for what I'm looking for when it comes to an electric car. Obviously the performance is there. The styling is good as well. It looks just like a regular car. So I like that quite a bit, but we do have a brake mode. We do have different drive modes. I do have the ability to use one pedal if I want to, depending on how you set up the car, you can turn on a very aggressive brake force regen, which will essentially use one pedal driving, which is something that the BMW i3 did. So you're getting all of that stuff. You're getting a good, set of charging capabilities with this like i said up to 205 210 kilowatts to be able to charge if you're using that my ev duty smart home charger works great and not only that but the app if you use the bmw app it will tell you if the car is charged and charging and things like that so you have a lot of control on the app as well scheduling it works fine I talked about that before with some other vehicles sometimes you need the app to do that i didn't need it for this but i could i was able to send my schedule to the car and it did it for me and the car was cold when I started it up today, which is the way I want it. It's summer, I want the air conditioning on before I get into it, and it worked perfectly. So essentially everything that I'm looking for when it comes to an electric vehicle is present when it comes to the i4 M50. There really isn't anything that's missing, which is strange, because usually I have a couple things that I'm gonna nitpick about, and so far, there isn't any. iDrive works extremely well. There's a lot of data. Could be a little bit more data for your driving stuff, but for the most part, you're getting what you absolutely need out of an electric vehicle. The comfort is good. The space is good. And now I maybe made the mistake of posting this vehicle on the R Electric Vehicles subreddit, and I had a lot of people who were unhappy with this vehicle because they feel since it's based on a gas vehicle platform that it isn't perfect. And yeah, it does weigh a little bit more than it could if it was a purpose-built EV platform from the ground up. And yeah, we do have a transmission tunnel in the back here, but the batteries do take up that space. It's not empty. So I had some complaints about that. Oh, you're not going to get as much uh, room in the back seat as you would on like a Tesla. Okay, I guess so. But are you really going to be putting five people in the back of this car? Yeah, I sat in the back of this to film the B-roll. It was okay. Was it my favorite experience? No, but I'm a driver. I'm not a passenger. So for me, I wouldn't be sitting in the back if I didn't have to. So there's a lot of good with this vehicle. And again, it shows us what the future of BMW's electric vehicles will be, the future of the BMW i brand. And if this is it, I am extremely excited. And now that I've seen this, I'm very excited to see what the i7 will have to offer. When we saw the first images of that, okay, the exterior design, maybe not your cup of tea. It certainly isn't for me. But now that I've driven this, if that's going to be the type of experience that we're going to get with the i7, then sign me up. I think that this is a very bright future for BMW's electric vehicles. The mainstream buyers are going to be interested in this. And that's what I said at the start. Some of the funkier designs are things that you know, a lot of the diehard EV people are going to be going for. So maybe the i4 won't be for them based on some of the things that we've talked about. But I think if you're in the market for an electric vehicle, you like the BMW brand, you want something that is performance oriented and still traditionally looks like a car, this is the way to go. And I checked, I was very curious, if you were to go and buy a 2022 
M340i X-Drive sedan, which is as close as you're gonna get to a gas car when it comes to this, yeah, there's a $10,000 difference when comparing it similarly equipped, which, you know, is a lot of money. There's really no rebates when it comes to the M50 because it's too expensive, but you're gonna be saving money down the road. If you keep this for a while, you will, because one of the major problems that people have with BMW is the reliability. The engine costs a lot of money to repair them. Well, there is no engine here, so it should be less expensive down the road when it comes to repairs, which is good. That's what you want. You want something that you can buy and enjoy and not necessarily have to worry about. So you're gonna be saving cost on energy, you're gonna be saving cost on repairs down the road. So eventually you'll make back that 10 grand difference. Oh, I mean, how can you just not enjoy that? I mean, it's instant power, man. Oh boy, I'm really enjoying it. Good job, BMW. I'm thoroughly impressed with this one. It was on my list of vehicles and I was very excited to get into it. And then, you know, once I had this booked, it seemed like the iX was sort of the new one coming out, even though technically the iX was an older vehicle, but on the press fleet, the iX is sort of the, the new kid on the block. And I don't think I want to drive that now. This is the one I would get. I like cars and this is definitely the way to go. So very good job, BMW. Again, the formula is there to make really the perfect electric vehicle as far as I'm concerned. But if you have any questions about the BMW i4 M50 xDrive Grand Coupe, please let me know in the comments below. I do try to get back to everybody. Give me a thumbs up to the video if you liked it and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We've done a lot of electric vehicles over the years, so you can check out those. If there are some other ones in the market that you're looking for, you can compare it to this, but this would definitely be my choice, hands down especially for the price, but uh, it's a really good one. So thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.